Hi ladies, we're back again. I'm Jamie from DNA. This is Braylin, my beautiful model. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to do some feather hair extensions. So before we get started, I'm just gonna go through the basics of what's crucially needed in order to do these. So you're gonna need at least one of two basic tools. These are the clamp tools that actually put the bead into your hair, which is what holds the feather into your hair. As you can see, this one's a flat based one, which is for closing the bead. And this one actually has some kinks in it. This opens the bead. So this is how you remove it, this is how you put it in. If you don't have the one with the kinks, you can get it out with the flat one. It is a little bit harder, it takes a little bit more work, but it can be done. Second off is this little wire tool right here. Looks like nothing. Can't get the bead on the hair without this tool. So you're gonna need to do this. And this is already loaded with my beads. Beads are very small and they come in alternating colors. So I have some brown ones right here. It's gonna blend in better with Braylin's roots as opposed to like a blonde bead or a black bead. So we'll get started like that. You're gonna need a couple clips to clip the extra hair out of the way and a nice fine tooth comb to slice your sectioning out that you're gonna need. So let's get started. I've picked out two different color feathers, a very striped vivid one and a white one just to contrast against Braylin's hair. Now the feathers come in a million colors, shades, lengths, textures. Most of the time they're color resistant, so you can leave them in if you're coloring your hair. They hold curl if you wanna curl them into the hair, blow dry, wet, shampoo. Once they're in, you're good to go. So I've already kind of previously talked with Braylin about where she'd like the placement of her feathers. I wanna frame her face, so we're gonna kind of put them in the end of her fringe. So I'm gonna come in and slice the hair right where I kind of want it. I'm gonna leave her bangs down just so you can hide her forehead. Nobody really likes their forehead. So we're gonna do that. Like I said, you need the clip to clip the hair out of the way. And I can see that this is where I want the feathers to lay right here so they can kind of pop through, through the ends of her bangs. So you're gonna come in and take a pretty small section, almost in a triangle shape. So you can even see just how small of a section I'm taking. If you take a section that's too big, when you put the extension on, it's kind of bulky and sticks out. And if it's a little too thin, the extensions will slip out. So you kind of have to kind of practice with the texture and the thickness of your own hair to figure out what works the best. So once I've established my sectioning, I'm gonna come in with my tool. As you can tell, there's um, a larger loop on the bottom half and a smaller loop on the top. So the actual way that you put that onto the hair is you're gonna put your fingers through the larger loop, grab that section, and pull the hair through. Once the hair is through, you grab the top bead on your loaded tool and slide through. Now the bead is on the hair without having to go up against the cuticle, which can damage the hair. So that's why this tool is very essential to putting these in. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple feathers. Now, because the feathers are quite thin, I like to put at least three in per bead. That way I know with the thickness of the section I've already taken, plus the feathers I'm putting in, once I clamp it, it'll be enough weight and girth inside of the bead to withstand the pulling and brushing of everyday maintenance. I'm actually gonna mix this one and put a white and two of my vibrant striped in. I push them a little bit higher past the bead. That way at the same time, I can kind of pull them out and even them. Now Braylin does a lot of styling to her hair, so I'm actually gonna pull the bead a little bit farther away from the root. I'm gonna have you put your head down just a little bit. Just so we can see, there's a, maybe a quarter of an inch space between the actual root of her hair and where I'm gonna place the bead. As you can see, I'm holding the section of her hair with one finger and holding the bead in place with the other. That way it doesn't slip because I haven't clamped it closed yet. Then I come back to my flat tool once again, and I'm gonna clamp a couple of times on the edges, in the middle, just so that I know it's really in there. So like I said, I left it away from her root a little bit so that if she wants to curl and move, it's not gonna pull and create a lot of tension. You don't wanna get breakage or anything, so giving that little bit of give space will make them a little bit more comfortable. It won't hurt, you won't have any soreness. So that's how you do a feather extension. I can do one more just so we can see the process real quickly. So we'll come in and we're gonna put another one not too far away, maybe a little bit lower. So we'll section out a little bit more. Same thing, just 
so you can see the thickness of the section I'm taking once again. Holding it tautly, taking my tool, sliding the hair, nice and soft. Hair isn't steel, so you always want to be soft with it, can break. Now you notice the feathers have a, a small arch in them. That's just how they were placed in the bundle when I purchased them. However, once she shampoos it the first time or takes a curling iron to it, it'll hold the shape that you'd like to see. Give it a little bit of slack at the top, clamp down. There we go. So let's just see how that falls once we drop the hair on it. I'm gonna have you shake your head a little bit, Braylon, so we can get a natural fall. Beautiful. So now she has a couple feather pieces right by her face. So once again, like I said, you're going to need the essential tools, which are the clamping tools, metal prongs, your wire tool to actually put the beads on, the beads, and a wire comb. You can purchase any of these items at your local beauty supply store. I would highly suggest going to the counter first and asking for help without just going and buying anything. So real quickly, I'm also going to show you just how to remove one, just so you can see how easy that is too. I hear a lot of stories of girls trying to pull these out. You don't want to pull them out. You will remove that chunk of hair. So this is the removal tool. Like I said, there's a difference between the tool that actually puts it in, which is a flat base, which flattens that metal circle. And this has circle rings in it, which takes that flat shape back to a circle. So it'll just slide right out. Don't pull these out of your hair. You can kind of hear it pop back into that circle shape. And there it goes. Quick and easy. That's it. Thanks again for watching. This has been Jamie with Studio DNA and Mahalo. If you have any other questions, send your request to request at mahalo.com. Or if you'd like to be a super hair stylist, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. I'll see you next time.